Welcome to Next Game Sortie Series. Now today, I'll be covering my first full map strategy for farming Gallimfree, Sapphires, and Earrings solo. Now I do this solo on Ninja, but most jobs should be able to replicate it. From this run, I normally get 7,500 to 8,000 Gallimfree, and have 8 to 10 opportunities to get Sapphires and Earrings depending on how efficient we are. Now, know the exact path can fluctuate depending on things such as you finding NMs quickly or later on in the run, but I'll give the overall objectives that need to be completed and the order I normally complete them in to give you an idea of how a run goes. First, let's talk about trust selection. I use Sylvie, Cornelia, Monboro, Kurumoru, and Yignis. Now, I find this trust group works best for these farming runs as to not mess up my skill chains and magic burst rotation. Trust such as Shantoto 2 and Sethus are very useful in Sortie, but they also cause lots of problems with skill chains, so that's why I've taken to leaving them out. You want to start your run by looking for the Leech NM in the southern section of Map 1 or Zone A. If you find the Leech NM, kill it as quickly as you can with multi-step skill chains and magic burst. Now if you don't find him, you want to go all the way down to Gate D at the southern part here marked on the map and go through it to see if the Demizang Deleterious is among the farmer in the southern section of this map. I'll often find him here and know that the Leech NM can also be here at times. Now if the Demizang NM is present, pull him as safely as you can without linking the other farmer. Linking as many as two or three farmer is okay, but any more than that can spell disaster if you're solo. Once pulled to a safe location, you want to kill them starting with the Deleterious NM first. This is very important. Now the job of the deleterious NM changes each run, so some runs will be harder than others. Keep in mind though that these foes are level 131 plus, so they are not to be underestimated. I recommend fully enfeebling the deleterious NM before starting to unleash multi-step skill chains and magic bursts to take them down as quickly as you can. Now once the main NM is dead, you then want to deal with any adds. Now having a small number of adds on you in this instance can actually be good as your goal after you defeat the deleterious NM is to kill exactly three farmer to get the casket D1 to drop which has a chance at a sapphire and earring. You then want to head back north through D gate. Now obviously if the farmer or leech NM weren't present in the southern area when you first went through D gate you would just turn around and go back northeast right away. Now you now want to go northeast through the AQX mobs in the zone until you get to this D gate. Go through it, check for both the NMs once again on wide scan, and if they're not present, exit here at another gate D to go back into zone A. You now want to hug the right wall to run into another D gate in a short distance. Once through it, check for both NMs once again if you haven't killed them yet in zone D, and then exit through the northern D gate that is in the area here. Now, you will now be back in zone A, and you want to head northwest till you get to gate A1 and you want to go through it. Make sure you locate and kill the leech NM on your way if you have not killed him so far in this run. Once you get past gate A1, you want to heal just beyond the other side, and this will pop casket A2, giving a chance and another sapphire or earring. You then want to use gadget A to get the Kajil NM and kill him as discussed in a previous episode. After Gajo dies, you are of course given yet another opportunity at a sapphire or earring, and you then want to head all the way back down to where the starting device is and use it to get to device A. Now from device A, you want to cast a self-enhancing spell for a chest to spawn, and then head west to gate D if you have not killed the farmer NM yet to see if he's in this area. Otherwise, if you have killed the farmer NM, use device A to now get to device B. And when you are at B, do a hooray for yet another chest. Now head south through this B5 gate, and then through this locked B gate, which spawns casket B2, capable of giving you yet another sapphire or earring. Now once you open this gate, you want to use wide scan to find and kill the boot NM as quickly as possible. Now I'll normally check this ghost section first and hope that he's there. If not, I head for the skeleton area to see if he's present, and then I go through the next ghost area and then I finish up in the course area if he has not been present in the three locations previous. Now the idea is you want to kill the boot within one game hour or a little under 2.5 minutes of entering zone C to get his coffer to drop. So he pretty much has to be in that first area of ghost for that to happen. 
If not though, just continue to trek through Zone C until you find him and then kill him as you will get another chance at his coffer later in the run if we are quick. We next need to head for device C and pull a course or ghost to it so that we can kill it for another chest. If you pull a course, be sure to kill it with a quick multi-step skill chain as to not give him many chances to charm you. Now at this point, if you have not found the Demizang NM yet, in Zone D, you want to head southwest from Device C to the three Farmer rooms that we have not checked yet in this run to make sure that you locate that Farmer NM and kill him immediately. Then use Device C to get to Device B and go north in search of the fourth and final NM, the Porksy NM. Now he is normally in the area of Fire Elementals, this area here with the Umbrals, or up here with the Light Elementals, but I'm sure he can go beyond those areas, so just continue to make your way around Zone B until you find him. Now sadly, his coffer is spawned by having Casket B1 complete, which I have been unable to find a way to achieve yet solo. So this Porksy kill is simply to complete our kill of all four NMs, which does have its own reward. Once he dies, you should see an Orm Coffer drop, giving you 1,000 Gallon Free and a chance at a Sapphire and Earring once again. Now at this point in the run, you will have between 15 and 30 minutes left depending on just how efficient you have been and where the NMs on your map spawned. Your next task should be to head back to the starting device, and then to head north and start killing AQX mobs using only white damage or melee damage and magic damage. Now I had shown a method in a previous episode of getting these to drop with just magic damage, but I'm showing a slightly faster one today where you want to do white damage in addition to magic damage, so make sure that you're meleeing while you're doing your magic kills. Be sure that you and your trust do not weapon skill and that after three mobs, you should get chest A3 with the shard. Killing two more in this fashion should get you casket A1 with the possibility of a sapphire or earring, and then one more kill should make chest A4 appear, giving you the medal and seven and seven in zone A for this run, making it so that you're ready for your next farming run to spawn Gajou. I next head back to the starting device and then head to device C. Now at C, I respawn all the mobs in zone C and then quickly try and find the boot and M and kill them within 2.5 minutes to get the coffer C to spawn and give you a chance at a sapphire or earring. Note, you can only complete this second step if you failed to get the coffer to drop previously in the run. Now at this point, you normally have anywhere between 5 and 25 minutes left, depending on how efficient you've been. If you find yourself having more than 5 to 10 minutes left, I recommend you start working on two more objectives during your farming runs. The first is to kill an additional three farmer type mobs during your run and to make sure that the original three farmer that you kill and those three farmer that you kill are all of differing job types. This will trigger a casket D1 to spawn, which has the chance of having a sapphire or earring inside. Now the best time to do this is at the beginning of the run by killing a white mage, black mage, and red mage in that first southern room you get to when you're first checking for the farmer NM, and then to kill a warrior, monk, and thief right after you kill the normal mob at device C about midway through the run by heading southwest to their location. Now the second objective you can achieve is done by killing three mobs in zone C, all within 30 seconds from time of pull to death. This will drop a casket C1, which can grant a sapphire or earring. You want to make sure you get these kills done with usually some multi-step skill chains, followed by magic burst, in order to get them killed within that 30 second time frame. Now the best time to fit this in is right after you kill the boot the first time in zone C. Now I'm sure we can work on refining some of these steps and making it a bit more efficient, but at this time I feel this is a pretty good path to follow for soloers, and since where the locations are at always changes, runs are always going to kind of fluctuate with some being a little more efficient than others, depending on things like where the NM spawn, the job of the farmer NM, and how many farmers link during your pulls. That's going to be it for this episode in the Sortie series. I hope you found that helpful. If this is your first visit to my channel and you enjoyed the content, please be sure to click the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified when my future videos are released. Thanks so much for watching everyone, we'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.